Can we circle that rock? Oh, there, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, they all start to kind of look the same sometimes. Mm -hmm. To the untrained non-geologist eye. Oh. oh. Some of that smashing I'm talking about. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Let me get reoriented. Bring it, bring it left. Bring it left. Oh. I'm sorry, scientists. Yeah, you okay. gotta bring the whole arm left. Let me re-index this guy. There you go. Okay, not that. Not more. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Be careful, I promise. A little slow. Straight porch light just to see what happens. Yeah, thank you. Better or worse. As you get close, feel free to call for a zoom if you want it. Yeah, I think a zoom might be helpful. All right, thank you. You tell you. Steve exactly what you want. Yep, you tell me a little more, a little less, whatever. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm getting my grasp of scale here. Okay. Have we gotten some stills of this spot? We have. Thanks. Do you think I'm I'm down for coaching, Trevor? If you want to provide any. I have no insight. <laughs> um, no, I will line up bubble for you too. Give okay. you an extra perspective. That oh, that would be helpful. Thank you. And uh, just watch your jaws. Sometimes it's helpful to kind of half float them in so they're halfway closed instead of fully okay. gangly. And then you can just do the final grab once you're around it. Okay. Oh. It's all about feathering that jaw. So just kind of get around it and then give it the close. Okay. You got the right idea. A little bit closer. Yeah, it's hard to feather, but you'll get it. I think it. Now, it's up it to you, but you might find it easier to feather it with your uh, pointer finger versus your thumb. This feathering, or like, uh, the when I say feather, closing. I mean um, close Open the jaw, close. but not ha not all the way. Okay. You might find it easier with not on the top there with your pointer finger, but that's ah. up to you. Whatever you, whatever feels more normal. Thank you. I'm wondering if it's stuck. It's probably a little bit sticky, but if you get around it, you might be able to snap I think it off. I can snap it. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, I need to get more around it than that, I think. Okay. Thank you, world, for watching my training. <laughs> All right, that is on there. That is yeah. on there. Okay. Pull the arm out, please. Okay. I need to reassess here. Oh. Come full wide, Steve. Oh, rock, rocks, mini rocks. Full wide. All right, Beth, that one is stuck. Yep. Uh, next, next attempt. Where would you like? Um, down, bottom, can right. Can we get a partial zoom on the one that got knocked off? Yeah, Roger. Uh, just want to see. The one that got knocked off, down, bottom, right. This one right here. Oh, I see. Yep. Okay, can you move the arm down, please? And keep it inboard? Yes. Just elbow down. Not more inboard, though. Move it more outboard. Keep going outboard and down. Okay. Yeah, right there for as far as outboard, but now just down. Now just down. Can we circle that rock again, please? It's behind the manipulator. Yeah, you need to move the manipulator down so I can land first. I gotcha. So move the manipulator inboard. There inboard. you go. Inboard. Not that far inboard. Okay. <laughs> right there and just down. Okay. I need to be able to see the rock in order to land. I gotcha. So just bring your elbow down. Just the elbow. Down. Yeah. Thank you. So I'm still remembering what an elbow feels like on this. Raj. Okay. Yeah, that's good. The balance there is you don't want to be too out front and you don't want to be yeah. in all the box, camera, etc. All right, now you can, if you halt there, I'll come into land. I'm halted.
thank you all for hanging in with this gripping event. Gripping. 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 Huh. Gripping. <laughs> Dual purpose word. Maybe that'll stay. Let's see. No. Can you bring Atalanta heading to port, please? Yes. Okay, that should be good. Okay. Now, if you move the elbow down more, we can do a zoom in on that rock. Okay. Okay, halted there. Halted. Okay, go ahead and zoom, please. That's the rock you're after, Beth, I think? Potentially, yeah. Okay. From this side, it looks okay. Um, and we know it's loose because we put it there. So okay. um, if we could maybe try to pick that up and see what the other side looks like. Why is this not working? Okay, come wide, please. Pull wide. Okay. Ah. Why did that not work? That was weird. Okay. All right, halt the arm, please. It's halted. It's really hard to park the vehicle on the top bumper bar. I'm gonna go maybe there. Okay, I think that's pretty stable. You can go ahead for a grab there. Okay. It's right above that orange piece, right? Right above the right laser. Right above the right laser. Oh, I see. Thank you. Okay. Let's do this. And you can call for Steve zooms whenever you want them. Okay. Steve, can you zoom in just on the rock a little bit? That's great, I think. That's perfect. And you've got it in bubble too, just past the guard bar. Thank you. But this is, yeah, it's going to be tight in there, so you're definitely going to have to feather the jaws for that one. Okay. Your wrist is on that other rock there. Okay. I have to get that wrist out of there. Yeah. Oop. Sorry. Kind of a yeah. difficult angle. I'm going to tip the camera right a bit. That would help. Did I get you might have it? it? Yeah, I think oh, so. yeah. Do we think I got it? I think so. Let me put that grip lock on. Yeah, I definitely get that grip lock. You got something? I yeah. got something. If you line it up for Steve, he can zoom in. All right. Hmm. Hmm. What do you think, Beth? Do we have the lasers on? Where uh, they're on, but not still. on yet. So oh, we can I put see. that up into the lasers. Nice. Yeah, okay. Can we get a closer zoom, Steve, please? Zoom in. Can you give us some jaw rotate, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's go ahead and put that in the bio box. I might try to pick up one more. 
Okay, you want to put that in forward or starboard? Forward, please. Okay, come full wide, please. Forward Omega, please. I think forward is fine. <laughs> Thank you. Nice job, Ashton. Okay. Thank you all. Right. Okay, let me re rearrange a little bit here. Anything floaty up there? No. Okay. Roger. And that is Omega. If I get uncertain, I'll hand it over to you. Roger. As you get closer, I'll follow it in. Okay. We'll get you right above it before I open up. Okay. One one seven. Do you think I'm close enough? You want to be over the right side. Over the right side. Okay. Nice wrist pitch maneuver there. That was good. Thank you. All right. Okay, I think you're pretty close there. Okay. And the jaws are in the correct orientation. I'm going to bump down just to see the top of the lid. Oh, thank you. And okay, might need to be a little bit more to the right. Okay. And that's plenty inboard. Okay. And I think we're good to open now. You ready? I believe so, yes. Okay. Okay, you can place it in the box there. Okay. Think I can drop it? I'd get it a little closer, just make sure it lands on the right side. Okay. I'm trying to get closer without getting. Hey, yeah, you won't get closer with shoulder down. You got to use the what you were doing earlier. Okay. Let me halt for a minute. And yeah, reorient. Totally. Okay. That's the right maneuver. You got, I see your wrist pitch okay. moving there. I think I need a... Uh, so it's this maneuver. That is your yaw. That is my yaw. It's this, is your this maneuver. Yeah. So right now you're all twisted in there, which I'm is really hard to twisted. move that. Yeah. You're halted, so if you move it right there, okay. now you have all the up and down with this hand moves your wrist pitch. Thank you. Ah, uh, gotcha. Okay. And you're trying to wrist pitch down in this case. Yeah, just like that, exactly. Nice. And then watch your jaw angle before you open them. All right. Nice, lovely. Wrist pitch. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm overthinking or underthinking. So wrist pitch, just push your hand right down. Just down. Down, there you go. Down and then rotate. Yeah. Thank you world for your patience. Okay. And by world, I mean mainly this room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. With bated breath. Yeah. Go right ahead, you're okay. doing fine. Do you think I can drop it yet? Will it make it into the right box? Is it too risky? I think right there is perfect. That's yeah. the one. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, okay. a good, that's a good area. Nice. Oh. Jaws. Swish. All right, three pointer jaws and move outboard. There we go. All right, rock in the box. Oh my gosh. Okay, are we going to do any other samples here, Niskins or anything? Well, uh, so I want to try to pick yep. up another rock just because that one okay. it looks good, but it's already it broken. <laughs> 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 Great work, Thank though. you. Thank you for the lesson. Okay, you're not halted? Oh, Make sure you're I halted. thought it was halted. It says index. Did I hold it down too long? Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Index. 
Yeah, the way you tell is always wiggle. Always it's a hard wiggle. habit to get into, but it's a very important one. Okay. Thank you. Okay, great work. Oh, thank you all. Thanks, Trevor. Nice job, Ashton. Nice that was awesome. work, Ashton. <laughs> Oops, that's right. Somebody said three cheers from Norway. Good job. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> That was that was the first time I picked up a rocks and put it in the box. So <laughs> <laughs> excellent, feeling pretty proud. Yeah, should. <laughs> All right, Beth, what's next? Um, can we tilt, um, pan the camera right just a little bit? That's well, full uh, beans. Yeah, there we go. Um, this one that's right in front of you. It's a little bit big, but maybe it's like 15 centimeters. Some lasers on it, and we'll find out. Oops, that's not a great grab. That is. Yeah, it's about 15 on the vertical. Yeah. Um, and can we rotate so I can see the other side? Yes. Ashton, I definitely gave you the harder choice. <laughs> yeah, this is great because it's not broken Thanks, yet. Man. This is this is perfect. Okay, come wide, please. Uh, oh, wide. Let's go ahead and add that to the same. Uh, same box? Same box. Same box. Oh, not like that. Oh. I won't. Oh. Why don't I just drop it? Is that what you asked for? It also works. Uh, rats. I think well, it might be gone. Sorry. It's okay. Um, the one right next to it, we can try that too. Okay, take Good two. Good work. Okay, that one's already broken. Not, this, not interested in that one. What about... That's uh, good. What about, ah, oh, that is right there, isn't it? Very smashable. What about this one? Are you, are you pointing I'm at po something? I'm trying to point at this one here, right behind the boulder now. I'll move the rock and once the dust clears, there's a pretty rounded one there. I'll wait till the sediment clears. Yeah. Um. With bubble cam, can we see if that rock that we dropped is like below us or is it just gone? Oh, yes. Do you think you, you will front porch view. know it if you see it? Oh, yeah. It's oh. there. Oh. I don't know if I'll be able to land, but I can try if you want. Well, we'll try up here once the sediment cleared. Okay. And if that's not fruitful, we'll try to recover. Do you want to wait for the sediment or do you want me to just grab it? Um, I still can't see what you were pointing at. All right, it's behind the manip right now. Like this one right here? Uh, one over. Right here. This one? Is that what you're pointing at? Uh, I think I'm going... No, I'm looking at this guy. Or maybe it was this one. That one right there? Yeah, yeah. Um, potentially, it might be attached, but we can try it. Oh, making a dusty mess here. It's amazing how much sediment one rock can stir up around. Okay, how about this one? Kind of getting whatever I can at this point. No, I can't get that. Can't get there from here. Um, Trevor. Hello. Not to ruin this fun, but what if we try this piece? Sure. While we can still see it. If only I hadn't just dropped that one. It's okay. Wasn't meant to be. No. <sighs> hmm. That one's pretty attached. Okay, that one's still attached. Okay. All right. Anything over on that side? Can um can we tilt or pan the camera I'm to the right just a little right. bit and um
get a slightly tighter zoom. Yeah, we can zoom in a bit, sure. Go ahead. That's good, you can stop there. Okay. Do you want bubble cam on craft arm or on... So is this the one you were trying to go for? I think so. Okay. <laughs> yeah, let's try that again now that I can see it. Roger that. Nice. Yeah. Is that the kind of thing you're looking or is that too angular? Hmm. It's a soft yes. Soft yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's just go ahead and put it in the box. Okay, um, come full wide, please. Can we get a couple shots of it, actually? Come full zoom. <laughs> Pardon. <laughs> Thank you. Great. And one more over here, maybe? Yep. Beautiful. Okay. Okay. That's going to be Omega. Omega. Thanks. Am I? All right. You yeah. ready for that tool tray? Oh, am I extended? Oh, I'm extended out. Whoopsies. Oh. Okay, ready for a tool tray. All right. Tool tray out. Is it already out? No? Uh. Is it? No? Oh, I know what happened. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, what happened? I know what happened. Fascinating. Let me see if I can do it from here. Okay. Cool. Okay. I found a bug in the code. Okay. Oh. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> That's neat. You can extend now, I think. Oh, I can now? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's crazy. You put the child lock on. Yeah. <laughs> Ashton lock. That's hilarious. Same cool. Same. Oh, good work. Found a new bug. Okay. <sighs> I think we'll probably want a Niskin here. Okay, off bottom or in the sediment? Uh, Beth? Um, if we can just lateral to the left, we'll be fine. Okay, now when I take off here, do you want me to just do a quick look for that other round rock? Or yes, please. Okay. That is going to be Niskan 4 when you get to it. Okay. I see it. It's this black one here. Yeah. Do you yeah. want me to grab it? I do. Okay. This would be a much easier spot to land, too. Perfect. Um, what is protocol related to swapping out samples if they've already been put in a box? As far as I'm concerned or as far as uh, others are concerned? Hmm. Uh, others. Um, Diane, are we allowed to do that? Yeah, I think it... Yeah? Okay. I mean, if it's already in the box, would another one just fit and that would yeah, be can fine? We, can we extend? I don't think we can put... Yeah. Three in there. Yes. Okay. So let's take let's take a look. I would definitely prefer to not pull anything out of the box. I think we can fit three in there. Okay. And if we can't, then I'll probably know in a hurry. Okay. Do you want me to pull that box in at all, or are you okay? That's fine. Yeah, I cannot get around it. Sure. Do you need to pull it in for pictures? Uh, I can just tip up. Faster. Oh, nice. Okay, zoom in, please. Okay. Yeah, great. Okay, come wide. What do you think, Trev? Is it going to fit? Yeah. I think it'll fit. All right. I'm really glad we're getting practice on rocks and not like
crinoids or something really hard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you can box in. All right. Confirm that it fits. Yeah, I'd say that's fine. Beautiful. Even more so than last night's rock in the back box, which I'm sorry about. <laughs> How hard was it to get that rock out? Well, uh, we're going to find out uh, couple in a couple hours. Oh, yeah. We haven't been back. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, yeah. Niskin, right. You talked Niskin, about that. Niskin, Niskin 4. Take off before doing it. Four. Lateral left. Okay, something like that. Yeah, that's great. Thanks. All right, it's fired. Mm. Thank you. Thanks a lot, everybody. And do we need to be thinking about coming off bottom? Yeah, now I think, I think so. time. We don't have enough time for a move, and this will give us a little in the bank for other things. So you can kill porch light, please. All right. So that was, oh, I see it. You got it. Um, why not? Thank you. Yep. Okay. Uh, let's come straight up because I can't stretch out right now. And then we'll, as I can fly forward, I'll stretch out for recovery. Sounds great. Okay. Coming off bottom. Might as well... I said coming off bottom, but I might as well just come up on this wall while we're here. Sure. Let's Take see what goes by. Yeah. If I can't get in the recovery position anyway, then let's do some science. Pretty spiral coral. Very pretty. Have you guys been seeing a lot of that kind of coral on this? Dive with your on your watch. Aridogorgia. Yeah, yeah, we have. Yeah. Aridogorgia. Oh, hi. Hello. The voice here. Yes. Yeah. I thought Didn't you were maybe realize. talking to us from the lounge. I was like, where? Is this <laughs> voice <Yeah>. from? <laughs> I am here, um, just covering for Shelby, okay. so that she Thank can have a, a live ship to shore interaction with our students. Great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, since our shift, we started off with some very large and beautiful yellowish bolosoma and some polyopagons and those started to diminish in abundance and we started seeing just the chrysogorgia of different varieties and now we're in the really steep area where we haven't seen a lot of animals because it doesn't look very stable looks like there's a lot of landsliding yes yeah, yeah exactly yes. You can do a 100 heading. All right. Preparing for liftoff. Preparing for liftoff. Awesome. Bonk. Overhang. What? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's oh. a good one. Oh, Whoa. wow. That's Hello. cool. Hello, big rock. As soon as I lose Atalanta heading, I get an overhang. What? <laughs> of course. Or Atalanta view, I mean. Okay, we can keep a 10 meter delta for now. All right. Until we're clear of the cliffs. Wow.
this is a wild ascent. I'm calling this off bottom, but I'm not even <laughs> off bottom. <laughs> this is a lot of fun. We're kind of just climbing the wall. Yeah, yeah. you're just on the side. Yeah. Yeah. Can we just always ascend like this? <laughs> <laughs> Mountains all the way up. Yeah, that'd be great. It's like coming off the cliff bottoms. Are we, would, it, would we call this scaling a cliff? <laughs> yeah, basically. Our watch was almost became the cliff divers. Really? It's because we just go off of the cliffs all the time. Uh -huh. What did you see on your watch primarily? Um, we saw quite a bit of sand and sediment. Oh. And that was kind of like a nice little breath of fresh air after staring at a some amazing rocks for most of our dive times. Were you the watch that took the sediment core? Uh, yes. Cool. I haven't seen the ROV do that yet. It was a, it was a good little challenge for our, <laughs> our practicing ROV pilots. And we're still going on the on the cliff here. Yeah. Can I look at the sample log when you have a second, Diane? Sure thing. Maybe um, Annabelle, you can talk a little bit about what we what we've been looking for on this on this dive. Um. Uh, okay. <laughs> so I don't I don't know if we were looking for anything. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Okay. I don't know if we were looking for anything super, super specific. We were looking for a lot of the things that we that we typically look for. So the rocks that you just saw us collect are for our microbial study. So uh, that's Beth Orcutt's uh, project. So we were looking for sort of like these rounded rocks uh, that have that manganese crust on them so that... Um, Sometimes these crusts will have sort of like the a black outside of a crust with the with the rock on the inside, um, and so we collected three of those just now, or three three rocks for that study. We also were looking for some more jagged rocks for the geology dating project to try and understand the age of these seamounts and this ridge. Um, and then, like always, we were looking for kind of interesting biological specimens that mm -hmm. that um, that are of interest to our macrobiologist um, on shore and on the boat. So that's that's kind of the broad overview. Thank you for sharing that with us. Awesome. And we're we're just trying to um, to leave the ocean floor right now and. Ascending and trying uh, is a great way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> we are, we are, yeah. The ocean floor just won't leave us. <laughs> That's true, really yeah. what's happening. <laughs> been a hundred percent up for uh, five, eight minutes now. Yeah. Although I won't complain. This is awesome. This is, this is way a great better than blue water. Blue yeah. water ascent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like I like this kind of rock climbing too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I yeah. It it's so hard for me to imagine what it would be like, actually being down there and like mm -hmm. looking up the up the cliff face and like scaling it like yeah you can saying. Now, yeah. Mm -hmm. have you ever gone diving before what type of diving uh, scuba diving yeah or like scuba diving, diving from a dock S scuba, scuba diving, diving. <laughs> like swimming like like uh like snorkeling up. okay okay sorry it's like what type of diving um yes i have been scuba diving actually have you i have i i I sometimes used like in the beginning of the dives, I would catch myself holding my breath as if I'm diving under the ocean with the ROVs. <laughs> and then I'm like, nope, I'm up here. Awesome. Is it possible to get a little zoom on the high pack? I think Lynette is talking to somebody else right okay. now. Yeah. Um. Standing by. Sounds good. And here we are. Okay. I'm, I'd call that off bottom, bottom in sight, but off bottom. So I'm gonna just come up as fast as possible now. Awesome. I'm hitting 15, possibly 20. All right. Let's see if I can lock in around that. Awesome. 
Awesome, thank you. Is this a good time to ask some questions that are coming in from the world? Yeah. Okay, so. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, there was a little um, question about our sale plan and where we've gone thus far, and um, Maybe someone can speak about where we've gone and why we came or went to the places we went to. So we started in Honolulu. We kind of went directly west, just, just north of west actually. And then we cut through the monument and went, well, we entered the monument and then went straight up towards the Liliokalani um, Seamount Ridge. And we, we tried to do our first dive. Uh, the first couple attempts were a little challenging. So um, once we were able to complete our first dive, there was quite a bit of weather that we had to um, avoid because it prevented us from doing the dives that we were wanting to do. So um, we went north towards the top of the seamount. And I remember having a conversation with Beth about how it's kind of, we kind of told ourselves to do that when we named, when this expedition was named Hiki Kekumu, which means go directly to the beginning. Yeah, right. So the weather said, no, you're not starting at the end of the forks of the Liliokalani Ridge. You need to go to the junction where we think the forks began mm. um, and get those rocks first and try to understand their origins. And then the weather improved so we could continue south. Um, yeah, so then we re-entered the monument. We've done three dives on three different seamounts on the quote-unquote western fork of the Liliokalani Ridge, Solide, Mercury, and now Loudoun. Uh, once we recover, we're going to begin to transit over to the presumed eastern fork of the Liliokalani Ridge to do... Um, there's three seamounts over there that we're going to try to target in our remaining days. Argonaut, Nootka, and King George again, um, coming full circle <laughs> to the where we started, uh, our very first dive. And um, we're going to go over some unmapped features that look like they might be little mini seamounts, mm -hmm. little conical seamounts, uh, just west of Argonaut and Nootka. So we'll see what those look like and if any of them attract our attention. Thank you. Awesome. And King George is one of the largest seamounts in this area. A very large flat top geo um, that actually rises up relatively shallow, I think around uh, less than 600 meters. Whoa. So if we have time, we might try to do a dive that goes towards the summit um, to see if there's any evidence of uh, supporting fisheries. Thank mm. you. There's some hints in the bathymetry data that maybe there's some stuff up there. So yeah, we'll see. That'll be the shallowest dive that we, or the shallowest portion. Shallowest we seafloor. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, good questions. That's nice to know. Yeah, and this question actually came in like 50 minutes ago. So, <laughs> so it's, I was like hunting around for this question because when I came in to stand for Shelby, she's like, we got to address this question when we have, when we have air. Like, okay, I'm going to hold on to it. Awesome. When we travel to the next dive location and we map the bottom floor, will Lynette, with her background, be involved in that part of the operation? Ooh. 
Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so when we are not diving, um, I'm not navigating, I'm mapping instead. She's a hard working lady over here. <laughs> yeah, awesome. she is. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Hmm. Just trying to catch up with all the questions coming in. Hmm, this is an interesting question. Is there a way to tell which way is up? Do plants grow towards the surface? I feel like I have a hard time understanding which way is up because the plants grow up, down, side to side. <laughs> yeah, here the effects of gravity, which often affect which way things grow, um, and the orientation of the sun uh, on land, right? You have very different effects in the deep sea. Um, so often we see orientation to where the current is greatest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so sometimes the animals are attached to the underside of a cliff facing towards the center of the earth <laughs> um, because that might be where the current is best. Mm -hmm. And the current is where all the food is, yeah? Yeah. So that's so that for things that are filter feeders. Yeah. So the filter feeders are always re reaching out into the current, trying to get as much food as it can. Because you know, just like me, I'm hungry all the time. Awesome. Okay. Do you folks flip a coin to see who runs the robotic arm? To see who wins it or who runs it? To who who runs it? Runs. Oh. Um, no. Trevor always runs the robotic arm because he's the best, but he is attempting to teach me, so that's good. And then with the other, I'm the intern, so I'm just learning, but with the other teams, um, I think they might go back and forth, though I often see the Atalanta or Argus pilot running it a little more often because um, Hercules is a little more complex to pilot, and so that allows the Herc pilot to focus on that. Hercules is also closer to a lot of the rock features sometimes, and so it lets them focus on not bumping while um, someone else does all the complicated arm work. Yeah, disclaimer, I'm not the best. <laughs> You're the best in this room. The uh, <laughs> the advantage of having the co-pilot use the manip allows you to do kind of more advanced maneuvers. If you can't land, you can still take samples while actively flying the vehicle. I think I saw a comment from Chris Kelly yesterday that called you masterful and an artist with the arm. So in this room, you're the best. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. <laughs> Trevor's blushing. Beth, do we know when the next dive will be? Or anyone? When or where? Uh, both. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we'll be recovering on deck in uh, about an hour and a half. And then we'll, uh, after we get everything, all the samples secured, about an hour after we recover, then we'll begin transiting towards the east. Uh, and multi-beam mapping along the way. We've got a plan to do that for about tw 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And then I believe we'll be uh, 
diving on Argonaut Seamount, which is just on the inside of the monument boundary mm. um, on the presumed eastern fork of the Lily O. Kalani Ridge. Um, uh, to be determined, though, we still need to come up with a dive plan. So whether it's Argonaut or Nootka, gotcha. still to be determined. Is the proposed next uh, dive site um, going to be as steep as this one, do you think? Or is it not going to uh, be I as... I haven't looked at the multi-beam data. I don't know. Gotcha. Uh, it, I don't think that Argonaut is a flat top geo. I think mm -hmm. it's smaller, probably not as steep as what we just did. Got it. Hi, hey, Stephen. I've been meaning to ask you, what other, or are there other short wildlife documentaries that we should put on our list of Stephen movies to watch? Um, films that I was connected to? Mm -hmm. That's the, that, I'd say Nesting with the Devil is the, the main one. Okay. Yeah. Um, let me think about it for a sec. Okay. <laughs> Uh, somebody's wondering what limits your dive times. Uh, I know you swap every four hours or so, but why not just dive all the time? Um, well, um, if you were listening just a little bit ago, Beth mentioned dive plans. Uh, so we don't just randomly dive on sites. We have to determine how many waypoints. We have to determine size and shape and all of those things and, you know, come up with the, an approach. And so sometimes that takes time. Uh, sometimes there's priorities in between dives, um, like mapping, um, a lot of different things uh, goes into that. Um, yeah, so. Yeah. There's also only so much room in the sample boxes. That's true, right, yeah. Shelby? So. That's right. We, we can't up, pack them. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it took too long on the rock arm. We do do a lot of teaching in the control room, and they, uh, we, yeah, teach all, all over the ship. Um, in particular, when you hear Ashton and Trevor, um, Ashton is an ROV intern, and there are other internships that are available through 
Ocean Exploration Trust um, on board EV Nautilus. There are video engineering um, internships, and we have a video engineer on board, Rhett. Um, mapping. Um, what, else, what I haven't said yet. I don't know. There's other internships um, on board, and so lots of teaching always happening um, around the ship. Um, and I feel like everyone is always pretty open, even if you're not an intern, you're just wondering how something works or what someone does and how they do it. Um, always pretty open to sharing with each other um, about that information. So, yeah, definitely um, goes outside the control van for sure. Yes. Do we have sunrise happening out there? Oh, that's a good question. Let's see what's going on Inquiring outside the Inquiring Diane's need to know. <laughs> Inquiring Diane's. <laughs> well, something, a little cloudy, I think, but. Oh, I have a question for the room. Okay. I'm always, sorry, I had to make sure I had it right in my head. Um, I'm always curious about everyone's sort of that one teacher that you never f forget, like across all of your schooling, whether it's like elementary, middle, college, high school, whatever, that really made an impact on you or really believed in you or really stuck with you. Like everybody has that one teacher that was just the best teacher they ever had and I don't know it was just like super memorable does anybody have that mine's from third grade her name is Mrs. Miller that's right Mrs. Miller if you're out there whoop, whoop. I haven't forgotten you Miss Miller <laughs> DeKalb and County Atlanta Georgia <laughs> you were awesome I love you what kind you are. of teacher was she she just a regular it was classroom? elementary so yeah. you know she taught everything <laughs> okay <laughs> she what was special about her I don't know. I just feel like she always reassured me that I was capable. Ah, uh, yeah. And mm -hmm. um, 
That was who I went to in my mind too, the, the reassurance that you're <laughs> she capable. She always just reassured me. Like I always felt smart around Aww. her. You know, she never felt made me feel like I couldn't do any. She believed anything. In you. She did, and she was just super nice. And she always like took up for me. I don't know. I just like Miss Miller. I don't know where you are, but mm. kudos, big ups Shout to you. Out. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's important. That's it is. A, a big part of this. You know, feeling the confidence to go and explore and try and um, because yeah it it takes a lot of nerve it does right? oh I have an honorable mention follow up Dr. Dunlap my AP lit teacher in high school love you too wherever you are out there I think you're in <laughs> Texas <laughs> so that was AP, AP literature okay. in high school nice yeah she she just always challenged us to like think bigger and it was always just like pushing the buttons at our school I don't think the other teachers really liked it a lot because she was always just you know bringing yeah. like bigger themes of the world into the class and like it was just always we were always excited to go to AP Lit it's just we were just always blown away by what we were going to learn so yeah Shout out expanded to you. your horizons a bit yes wow. I learned a lot right before I graduated okay somebody else's turn I'm done now <laughs> Anybody else want to jump in? Otherwise, I'll go ahead. I've got a couple of them. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. All right. So Mrs. Briggs, my um, high school art teacher, first actual formal art class I ever took. Ooh. And yeah, um, I think oftentimes she let me roam with an idea, which was incredible. Uh-huh. Um, you know, there would be specific projects to work on, and, and within that framework, she gave me a lot of freedom, and she let me pull in, like, biological subjects and things like that into some of the art nice. projects. It was awesome. Um, yeah, and Mr. Barnett, also high school, uh, he did all the sciences. I went to a very small school. Whoa. Yeah, and... Uh, he also had this artistic bent, so I remember that like he could draw just about any sample, uh, you know, like that we were looking hand? at. Yeah, freehand, wow. just chalk on the board, and it was awesome. And he was very inspiring as well to, you know, explore as much as possible. And also that like artistic side really kind of fed yeah, my like, directions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then college would be Dr. Kroom. She was the one who was like, I believe in you, Diane. Yeah. Like, I remember coming to her after the first test. I got like a B minus. I was like, devastated. Devastated. <laughs> He's like, I'm not devastated. smart. <laughs> I go to her office and she's like, Diane, this is your first college test. Relax. You relax. <laughs> you got this, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, Dr. Kroom. Oh, shout out to all three of those. Yeah. Wonderful educators. They yep. definitely make an impact they in make, our lives. They make all the difference, right? You can find information all over the place, but uh, when there's someone there that connects mm -hmm. you to the information and makes it real, uh, that's what, you know, triggers something. I Absolutely. Think, so. I agree. I agree. Okay. I don't know. I think Beth is working right now but front row are you on SBL? yeah yeah did What's you guys up? hear the question about the teacher yes yeah. or teachers plural i had two <laughs> diane I had, had three, three. i've been trying to think and i haven't really okay. been able to narrow it down more than like 10 so that's not very helpful well, i know i know right <laughs> name hey, like two that? of those Ooh. 10 Ooh. little parachute going by bye <laughs> just name like two of said 10 and then <laughs> okay, i'll name i'll name one that just because it's a funny story okay there okay. was a physics teacher in high school he was you know really good teacher, whatever. But a funny story about him was he'd be, we'd be doing these Bunsen burner experiments or whatever. And he'd say, okay, you know, these kind of things would be really hot. Like, let them cool down before you grab them, obviously. <laughs> but for some reason, he was just able to grab them off the Bunsen burner. These things are just boiled water or just, they were hot. And he just grabbed them and carried them around and he did not feel it at all. Oh my goodness. All the time. It was incredible. And he just because I'm touching it doesn't mean you should touch it. We're like, what do you mean, man? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway, that was a fun thing I remember about him. Oh. Did he have, like, damaged nerve endings in his fingers or I something? I think he just worked a lot in his life and had very thick hands. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's that's hardcore. <laughs> yeah, it's very hardcore. <laughs> that's hardcore. Yeah. I would be terrified in, like, him lab trying to touch <laughs> anything yeah. in the Bunsen burner. So, wow. Yeah, that's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> I've admit hands. Anyway. <laughs> 
Cool. Lynette and or Ashton. Oh man. <laughs> No, I think a lot of the teachers that I remember most and that I felt the most supported by were like kind of extracurricular activities. So they weren't necessarily school teachers, but I had like a p I had the same piano teacher for like 10 years. Really? Or, yeah, and she was awesome. When I got sick of piano, she was like really into science and we'd watch documentaries and she <laughs> taught me Russian. <laughs> so that's where it came yeah. from. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I negotiated my way out of piano lessons. <laughs> Been there. Yeah. <laughs> And then I, uh, I had a flight instructor too, who was um, really impactful, who I probably spent the most time with um, and like just learning from mm -hmm. in high school. So yeah. that was really cool. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Monica Kennedy and Eric Sable. Monica Kennedy, shout out to you two. <laughs> Ashton's doing big things. <laughs> <laughs> Picking up rocks and putting them into the boxes in the deep I ocean. Can almost use a hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Lynette, do you have any teachers or instructors or anybody who left a mark on you? Um, maybe my second grade teacher. Okay. Mrs. Leach. She was Aww. probably my favorite teacher. Oh. Yeah. Any particular reason? Um. Just awesome. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she was just, she was awesome and like super supportive and yeah. No. That's plenty. That's great. Yeah, second grade. I Those know. Were the days. Beth, you have. A <laughs> Um, sorry, what was the question again? A teacher. <laughs> a, teacher a teacher instructor that, that made a mark you. or yeah. inspired you through all ages. doesn't have to be college or grad school. It could school. be pre-K. It could be. <laughs> it could be postdoc. It could be, yeah, pre-K to postdoc. That's how we're going. When I was three months old. <laughs> <laughs> My nanny. <laughs> uh, those teachers when you're little are so inspiring, though. They're not jaded yet by, like, <laughs> had to do with 13 year olds Ooh. <laughs> no offense to the 13 year olds out there You're it's just sorry. a hard age really i don't, hard. I don't age. that ooh was because i was just so terrible at that age was that was old. kind of the worst oh. age for me it's a hard age to be yeah too. that's what i mean it was yeah. just like a hard time for me to be a human being <laughs> in my own skin it's a hard age to be around yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah shout out to middle school teachers oh man good yeah. job just impressed. Good job Aww. putting out with us. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, well, um, my brain is in a fog here, so I might get the name correct, incorrect, but um, I had a chemistry teacher my junior year of high school. Mr. Lanahan, I want to say his <laughs> name was. Um, high school chemistry. And, yeah, I... You know, I enjoyed science in high school, um, but nothing really sparked my imagination. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, his introduction for me to chemistry just really sparked that enthusiasm of like, what are atoms? This is crazy. How do these things react? Most of what I think is solid is empty space. <laughs> like, um, yeah, and he just had a natural curiosity um, and um, yeah, that's what inspired me to then study chemistry. Oh, nice. And go, so I took AP chemistry my senior year and then started college as a chemistry major and then I switched it later. So I guess, so I have Dr. Lanahan, thank for the trajectory <laughs> I'm on. Nice. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that. Steven, you have to answer the question now that you're back. <laughs> Put him on the spot. You're not, you're not, he's yeah. not off the hook. He's no, not off the hook. No, no, no. <laughs> What's the question? The question is, do you have a uh, 
teacher, instructor, mentor, person uh, throughout any stage of your life, we are doing a range from pre-K to postdoc um, <laughs> that inspired you, left a mark on you. You know, we just, I feel like we always have those like few or maybe one educator or people who like stick with us, you know, always for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, there, it's a few teachers. Um, there's this, a boss I had. A mm -hmm. chef that I worked for. You okay. used to be a what? You used to be a chef? No, no, no. Oh. <laughs> I was like a grill cook. Oh, okay. Um, but I had a chef that I worked under, and uh -huh. his name was Tony. And I don't know, he always uh, challenged me mm, nice. and taught me a lot. Nice. Uh, so, I don't know, it kind of taught me like a good work ethic, which I think. Which is always important. To uh, helped me out later on when I got into other fields. Mm. Um, yeah, and then there was a camera operator who I worked with. He was from Belfast in Northern Ireland, and I worked with him a bunch, and he was always really encouraging. He told me once I could do whatever I wanted, and oh, nobody really awesome. ever told me that, so kind of encouraged me to keep pushing myself. So That's shout great. out to Tony and Paul. Yay. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah, I love so hearing those stories from people. It's like no matter how old you get, <laughs> they're like, in like first grade, there was you're like, how do you <laughs> even remember? <laughs> like, look, if people stick, they stick. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, some teachers, <laughs> some teachers stick for the wrong reasons too. But That's true, but we're not gonna you. talk about that. <laughs> No, we're not going to talk about that group, though. I was going to say, there <laughs> was a calculus teacher <laughs> in high school, and I was admittedly terrible at calculus, who was like, you know, you're good at a lot of things, but math is not one of them. You should really reconsider being an engineer. You're not going to make it through. Aww. And I think every time I was struggling in a calculus class after that, I was like, I'm going to show him. <laughs> so it kind of reverse inspired it reverse you. Inspired, you know, yeah. I mean, like, and I've always wondered if he did it on purpose to make me work harder or if he huh. was really just kind of being a jerk warfare. <laughs> Psychological warfare. But it worked out for the best. <laughs> hey, we need those people in our lives too. Reverse never, motivation. Never forgot it. It ended up okay. Yeah, you did. <laughs> More than okay. Take that, Mr. Whatever his name is. We're not saying his name. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably best. You know who you are. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> Hmm. Hmm. Shelby, can I answer the question even though I'm in the lab? Yeah. Yeah. For sure. I don't even know. Oh, Annabelle. I was like, who is this? <laughs> it's Annabelle. Absolutely, uh, Annabelle, please. Okay. I've had so many good teachers, so I just <laughs> wanted to share. But I had an English teacher when I was a sophomore in high school who was so funny and was like, I don't even know how to describe her, but she was amazing. So that was Miss Johansson. And I would go talk to her every lunch and just have the best conversations. And then my senior environmental science teacher was the first teacher who got me interested in science in general. And then when I got to college, I met, oh, now I'm on the camera. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I was in college, I met um, one of my now mentors, Katyun, who was the first person who was like, you are really smart and your ideas matter. So that Aww. those are my three teachers Aww. who I Yay. love so much. Aww. Shout out to all three. Woo -woo. We appreciate y'all. Except for the person who told Ashton she was not good. <laughs> we appreciate it. We appreciate that it too. in a different way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are some of the things we do during the transit? Um, catch up on work, <laughs> sleep, um, get write ready for the next reports. dive. <laughs> yeah, write sample reports. Dive reports. Dive log reports. the data. Log, yeah. Slice rocks. <laughs> All uh, kinds of things. Yeah. Filter water. Yeah. So once we get the map. yeah, okay. once we get Multi the ROVs yep. on board, it's processing all those samples for the science team. 
uh, mapping team beaming in there. Yeah, still mapping the seafloor in different areas. Um, I'm sure the video team editing some footage or, um, yeah. So in between times can be busy too. Yep, absolutely. In a different way. Yeah, in a different way. Definitely still try to take advantage of that time for SCICOM team. We're usually still doing, doing interactions. Those never really stop other than uh, sometimes on the weekend because we mostly do places that are nine to five type hours. So schools and aquariums and classes and things like that. Um, or we are sorting photos and highlights and making photo albums and talking with the folks ashore, um, writing things, all kinds of stuff. Um, so yeah, all kinds of stuff happens during transit. Uh, someone just asked, what are those poles someone just carried out on the main deck? I'm not sure. I think I missed that, so I'm not sure what that is. Those hold the recovery hooks. Oh, there you go. Thanks, River. <laughs> so when Atalanta comes up off the transom, transom being the back wall of the boat, uh, it sits right at water level until people hook them. So at the end of those poles are some hooks connected to some rope line. And you hook it with the pole, pull the pole off the hook, and then use little air-powered winches we call tuggers to help haul in Atalanta. Cool, I didn't know that either. I was like, what poles? But I see them now. Yeah, so that helps stabilize it. Atalanta doesn't need help being pulled on board. It just needs help being stabilized as the ship takes rolls over the waves and the tuggers combined with the tether connected to Herc help stabilize it. Cool. Oh, someone always also just reminded that uh, we play cribbage during transit. We play cribbage even when we're not transiting. <laughs> People have been playing cribbage. How's that tournament going, by the way? I lost. Oh. I lost as well, but we're still alive. We're still in we we have to play each other. So double either elimination, yeah. Next time you talk to us, Trevor, I might be eliminated. Yeah. Oh, so <laughs> who is, who's at the top or winning? Uh, Diane and Rhett. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. No, actually, it was a really super close game. <laughs> It was uh, so with close. Trevor, it was yeah. ridiculous. We were within like two points point. of each other. I was one point? I was one two point from victory. Oh, yeah, exactly. Oh, wow. And it was, uh, I feel like I had very, very lucky cards. Yeah, Trevor's me too, a actually. It was, a good, it was a really good game. We worthy had Retina opponent. had a very close game as well. Extremely yeah. close. That's good. Cool. Kudos so to that makes players. it a fun tournament. Right. Mm. <laughs> Oh, science team question. Um, I think someone is wondering what that uh, sort of structure that you guys put that, uh, I think it's like a wooden structure with plastic sort of over it that's in the Oh, the lab. shield yes, hood. The, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that is um, something that Beth's team is using to isolate yes. their... Oh, it's, no, it looks um, like PVC pole or something. Yep, yep, that, that little box thing. Uh, basically, they're looking at the microbial community um, and they're trying to shield the the outer crust of the rock from microbes that might be in the lab, oh. so that yeah, we're not cross contaminating. Gotcha. Did I cover yeah. that correctly? Yeah, and also, as we're breaking the crust off the samples, it often creates little shards of rock, and so the shroud has a dual purpose of preventing that from flying around the lab and hitting people. We we appreciate that. Good. And just making a mess. So, multi-purpose, cool. Thanks for that question. <laughs> Are any of you scared of the ocean even a little bit? I've always wanted to be a marine biologist, but my fear of open water has always held me back. I think it's always smart to be a little bit scared of the ocean. Um, there's a lot out there and I think it helps you respect it but there's also a lot of wonder and a lot of great things that are out there um, and there are also ways to be involved in marine biology if you don't want to always dive or go out so um, yeah don't let that hold you back yeah to build on what Shelby said um uh, I do not scuba dive, and I also don't really snorkel because I don't feel like I fit in the water. <laughs> um, although I'm fine on a ship, and I'm fine in a submarine. Um, so, uh, as Shelby said, you know, you don't have to love being in you the really water <laughs> all the time to be a marine biologist. Um, there's also many careers. Um, 
uh, many ways to be involved in marine science mm -hmm. that don't involve having to do field work that yep. gets you wet in the ocean. Um, from you know, working with the extremely large data sets that are being generated by all the sensors that are deployed in the ocean, mm -hmm. to working from uh, you know near coast where you know uh, estuarine type research mm -hmm. doesn't require you to be out in the open ocean. So it really just depends on what your question is, what you want to do, and mm -hmm. your comfort level, and finding that right right spot. Yep, exactly. And you know, you can always start out. And expand later, you know, maybe your fear lessens or maybe you get more uncomfortable. So you never know. Um, I started out doing loggerhead sea turtle research and working more with like coastal environments and ecology, um, mangrove ecology, and that's not really open water. Um, but then, you know, you get more comfortable and stuff and, you know, now I go out more. So there's so many different ways. That doesn't mean you um, just have to completely be in the ocean. So keep going keep looking into different ways of uh getting involved marine bio or marine science uh, we are not headed back to port yet so you don't have to be sad <laughs> still some dives to go so you can still join us yeah from we have at least Oklahoma. another week of yeah. work out here exactly so you can still join us from OKC. Oh, looks like someone has been inspired by all the watches and things and they're building an autonomous sonar mapping boat now in Austria. Good for you. It sounds hard. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, someone's wondering, uh, Beth, will there be a cam on the rock cutting? I don't know if that's more of a Val question. But that the saw is outside, isn't it? Yeah, the saw is outside on the deck. It's yeah. um, uh, maybe possible to see with one of the outside cameras, yeah. but um, require angling it a little mm -hmm. bit differently. Um, we'd also need to check oh. with Val if she's comfortable with that. Yeah, well, we can definitely angle it. Thank you, Stephen. Um, so, it's, yeah, more if uh, uh, Val are... Um, other co-lead scientist who is uh, spearheading the more like geolog geological parts of this expedition um, maybe would be open to having that so uh, yeah we can see yeah was the question about streaming the rock saw action yeah um, they were just wondering like when we get around to cutting the rocks, they could see that, you know, just something new, something new to observe. Sure. Good question. Yep. What do we do with Mongo? 
I'm doing two things there. Uh, one is kind of get it more tucked in for recovery instead of way outboard. Uh, and the other one is just equalizing the pressures. There's lock valves that hold all the uh, hydraulic functions in one spot. Mm -hmm. So if we run them, then they don't move. Uh, but if we run them sub C, when the gauge pressure is, I don't know, 1500 PSI, and then we surface, then now the gauge pressure increases. Yeah, right. So that can exceed the reading of our hoses. We try to run all hydraulic functions when we ascend. We don't always do it, and it usually is fine. But whenever I remember, I do it. Yeah, I saw that Mongo got a little love tap on one of our last recoveries. Oh. Oh, yeah? Magnum. Got it. You got a little bit of injuries, did you say? Oh, just a little love tap when oh, yeah. it was yeah, getting it gets placed in the cradle. Yeah. It that arm does not owe us anything. Beat the tar out of it and it still still functions, so Yeah. What's the primary purpose of that arm? That's the one we don't really use, correct? Yeah, that we much? use that when we need a second manip. It mm. is only there to be secondary. Uh sometimes we have to it's like if you need to hold something and cut something, or yeah, exactly. Or like, yeah, okay. so if we want to cut arm. a line, yeah, then it's hard to just cut a line. If you ever tried cutting a rope that's uh -huh. just dangling there with right. one hand, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta hold it with your other hand. So gotcha. that's what that would do. Got it. Great example. My stomach knows it's breakfast time soon. <laughs> so close. Some, some fungus to tide you over? Oh, <laughs> absolutely not. Hard <laughs> no. Hard no. <laughs> it might make you lose your appetite, though. <laughs> no. I, I would rather I would, be Yes, hungry. let her be hungry. <laughs> <laughs> They're actually pretty it. good. I'm going to have uh, some fungus right now. Mute. Yeah. I don't know why I even tried them. I don't like mushrooms in general, soft and pliable. So. I, I love <laughs> mushrooms, but I don't, that <laughs> snack was not what I was looking for. <laughs> maybe if it were like part of a nice little cheese plate. Or some, yeah, maybe olives, I need to like eat it with something. Stuff like that. <laughs> but just like, hmm, I'm ready Out of a bag a like chips? Yeah, no. no. Nah, I don't think so. <laughs> Shelby, are there any new highlights or clips that have come up on the Nautilus page recently about our expedition? I haven't checked lately. Um, I think the uh, Chana Cops is still the most recent one. Um, I know a lot of the onshore comp people have been working um, to make sure the video footage has been getting clear. Some people have been um, seeing some like lines and a little bit of blurriness. Okay. So I think they are prioritizing that a little bit for the live stream and then they're gonna start uh putting up some newer highlights so um 
And then SICOM, we also are actively sorting the last. Uh, so we go through and sort all of the data logger pictures, because sometimes there's like eight pictures of the same thing. Sometimes it's cut off, sometimes it's blurry. And so mm -hmm. we go through and try to pull um, the good ones where things are in view and clear and all of that. And that gives the folks ashore good um, pictures and videos and stuff to work with. Plus the ones that we highlight during the dives. Um, so they have to sort of like sort through all of that. So hopefully some new ones should be coming up real soon. Okay. For our folks still um, in tune with us, um, if you look in uh, Satellite Feed 3, you can see Diane and Annabelle in the lab. They are waving. Hi, guys. Um, as they are just uh, prepping uh, for the vehicles to come back on board. So one of the uh, primary things that happen after we happens that uh, after the vehicles get on board safely um, is the science team and they go out and get all of the samples um, that were collected. Um, they have to get those out and get them processed as needed. Um, so you will, yeah, see a lot of busyness in the in the wet lab, um, and they are labeling and writing and getting ready to to go. It's really good to get um, a good start on prep. So that as soon as those samples are in and out of the water, they can get rolling. Also, since we're recovering at breakfast time, <laughs> have to get that process started early so yeah. everybody can also have a chance to get some food. Yes, absolutely. I have a question just about where we live on board and how we do all that. Uh, so most of us are in shared cabins on board the ship. Um, I believe some of the more permanent crew and like the captain have their own cabins, um, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, most of us are bunked together. Uh, some people share bathrooms. So for example, in my cabin. I live in sort of a sweet light structure um, where there are cabins on either side of the bathroom that hold two people per cabin and we share the bathroom and the shower. And uh, as far as our shower schedule, we just get in there when we can. Um, sometimes we are in and out of the room at different times, so that helps. Um, and yeah, about 50 people max, I believe. I know we were talking about this the other day. Um, can fit on Nautilus. There's enough uh, room for 50 people. Um, yeah.
I'm gonna pass you. Uh, for the person wondering if we're we're ending this dive, so what you're saying is, is this a race? <laughs> vehicles ascending, um, and we have a 24-hour mapping transit in between the conclusion of this dive and the start of the next. So the vehicles are coming out of the water. Uh, this was a 16-hour dive. Looks like we're just coming up around 500 meters in our recovery. Yeah. That's right. A little while to go. Is there a video, like a ship tour video somewhere? Anybody? No? There is a ship tour video somewhere uh, on the YouTube page. Oh, okay. Or on the website. All right, for that person wondering if there was a ship tour video, um, like Stephen said, there is one on YouTube. Uh, specifically, if you just go to EV, the EV Nautilus YouTube page, um, the quickest way to find it is to just click on the videos tab, and then if you go into the search bar and just search ship tour, it'll be the first video that should pop up. It's called 2022 EV Nautilus Ship Tour with Updates. So, enjoy.
Hmm. Shelby. Yes. Oh, just. Someone just curious about how long do our supplies last, food and all of the other resources <laughs> that we need. Um, so I believe the ship's max time at sea without needing to sort of stop into port to refuel or restock up on food and things is like 40 days. Um, this expedition is not quite that long, about three and a half weeks um, is the time that uh, we will be out at sea. We have, I think, just sort of crossed the halfway mark for that time. Um, yeah, and just in general, what, what's the longest you've stayed out at sea? This is the longest for me. Three, three and a half weeks is the longest that I've I've been. But I'm sure others have maybe been out to sea much longer than I. take button it so you can like select a salvo but it won't necessarily fire and change everything until you hit take is that your experience Trevor if you if you hit something on that touch screen it'll turn blue but it won't fire until you hit take so yeah
are people able to get like Nautilus gear? Like, can they order like a shirt or is that reserved for people who participate in the expeditions? As far as I, as far as I know, you cannot order your Got own Nautilus gear. Got it. Uh, to the person who's just saying thank you for sharing all the hard work and information and dives and knowledge. You're welcome. Thanks for tuning in.
someone wondering, will you have a change of watch mid-recovery? Uh, no. Um, we will stay here until uh, the end. Um, that's a good question. Uh, if a watch ends and we're still ascending, like have two hours to go or something, does the watch still change? I don't know. It that's, does. I think so. It yeah. will. Yeah. The only we're not going to do it now because we're so close to the surface. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So um, if there was like a significant amount of time left and one watch ended and another one began and we were still in blue water, then yeah, we'd still change. And the people that would change for us right now are the people that are going to be on the deck mm. recovering the vehicles. So. Gotcha. We'll finish it out. Everything ready to go? We're ready to go in the lab. All right. Excited about it. <laughs> yeah, just ready in containers and all of the different bins and things we will need right. um, pronto as soon as the vehicles get on board. And um, some of them are temperature sensitive, so we try and sample those from the vehicle first, get mm -hmm. those into the lab and into the refrigerator, keep them cool. Did you and get breakfast? Then, um... I may or may not have passed past the <laughs> buffet line and grabbed something <laughs> that shall remain nameless so I don't taunt my crewmates. We appreciate um, that. I don't know if I even tasted it, but... Did you just inhale it? Yeah. <laughs> Literally running up the stairs, so... Slurp sample pancakes. Slurp. It was a slurp sample. Yep. So... Yeah, because we've got a couple hours of uh, processing to do in the lab mm -hmm. afterwards. So, um, yeah, exciting things nice. coming our way. Lots of rock samples today. Lots of rock couple samples, of sponge yeah. samples, uh, some water samples for both microbial uh, analysis and for the DNA, DNA mm -hmm. environmental DNA is what that stands for. Sort of a background of what might be yep. living down there. Yep. Exciting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very exciting. <laughs> Uh, front row, if you're on SBL, somebody's wondering what is the limiting factor for ascent? Herc is DC slow. For the ROV. <laughs> yeah, we're full of rocks, so we're, we come up. <laughs> I mean, not to revisit previous conversations, but how many stones do we have? <laughs> of rocks? On board. Oh, no. <laughs> Stones of rocks. Stones of rocks. No. There was a conversation about the measurement stone, which is can be a measurement of weight. Probably not the most accurate <laughs> measurement we've ever used in the history of time. Um, but I can tell you how many rocks we've got. How's that? How many rocks we got? Tell me. Tell us. <laughs> Nine rocks, one push core, two sponge samples and four water samples. You mean on this dive? On this dive. Oh, I was like, we yeah. have way more than nine rocks. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm just talking this dive. Yeah, roger that. I think yeah. there was something on the whiteboard that we have like 
91, 92 kgs of rocks. This is true. So far, but for I think that the expedition. Can yeah. we just back up? Did you say kgs? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Nicely done. Okay. Yeah, I think we've added to that. I think that is for a measurement from two days ago. So yeah, oh. we have more kigs now. More kigs and more kigs <laughs> on the way. Is that not a thing? More kigs. I feel like it should like be a thing. Kigs kigs. Per kig. It's when like you're doing medic, like a dosage. Yeah, oh. yeah, per kig. I have heard that. Yeah. Kigs per kig. yeah. Maybe use more in the oh. medical world. But yeah, yeah. I'm not very, <laughs> into, not very into the medical world myself, so. It's like, all right, we'll use your metric units, <laughs> okay, but we're not going to use your names. <laughs> uh, for those who like pounds, that's like over 200 pounds. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, and that was referring <laughs> to kilos, kilograms. <laughs> And yeah, I can oh, right. that Kicks into kilograms. 2.2. <laughs> so yes. Bit over Convert. 210, I think. Oh, the maths. Oh, the maths. Yes. Whoa. We have eight minutes about, oh, well, maybe more than that, actually. I don't know. A little bit. Um, yeah, that is like every minute, but. What's happening there, Eric? Been getting <laughs> some uh, pretty chill. I was about to say run behind him, but I forgot he has to scoot out to be able to like sign correctly. So <laughs> 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 like a walkie-talkie. <laughs> oh, here are these little bioluminescent spots in the Atlanta cam again. We saw those yesterday when we were coming up. Oh. Do you have something at eight? They might just be reflecting Do you have something at eight o'clock? Do you think so? I, I'm not sure. It looks like fish scales, yeah. So cool. Okay. <laughs> Did you see my mind? <laughs> no, it's fine. Breakfast is until 8.30, so it's probably, I can probably make like the last 15 minutes or something. I'll eat, and if not, I always go for a bowl of cereal. I'm never mad. Yeah, we're at about 117 meters from surface. Counting down. Dun, dun. Maybe it's time to do our, our hand exercises. Up. Duck. I feel like I haven't like worked them enough to tuck, deserve rock. <laughs> this. <laughs> yeah. Up duck tuck rock. I don't think rock. I fist. Sorry. <laughs> rock, rock. Up up duck tuck fist. It is like it's rock paper scissors. <laughs> it's the same thing. It's up, rock. Duck, up duck. Up duck. Duck. Yeah. Tuck. Fist. fist. Is technically what it is. And you're supposed to do it, it slowly. Rock. I think. Yeah. You can Some do whatever thing. you like. <laughs> this is for our. Mobility exercises fishes. given to us by our <laughs> pilots. Hey, some fishes just went by in the ARG cam. Oh. Atlanta cam. Ah, excuse more me, fish. excuse me. Pardons. Whoa. Mm. I know. That's why I keep getting confused. Our computer programs say oh, Argus, and fish. so I keep referring to it as that. My bad. It's Atlanta. And she's <laughs> doing a great job. Uh, so someone's wondering, why are we exploring this area specifically? Well, we're not down there anymore, but we are exploring along uh, Lili Ukalani Ridge because um, we're wondering about the origins of this ridge. Um, specifically, I think one of the questions is why it sort of splits the way it does. Um, so it sort of bifurcates and like part of it is outside the monument, part of it's inside the monument. And um, so, yeah, it's an interesting feature of the ridge, and so being able to explore and take rock samples will be very beneficial okay. to our geologists uh, who are able to okay. take these samples back to the lab to process. 
Um, it will take a while, but hopefully we'll give us some information back um, about the age yeah, of the seamounts and, and ultimately, hopefully, the ridge. Um, and also interested in uh, the microbes on these rocks as well as animal biodiversity in these areas because don't forget these have never been explored. So that's uh, why we're over here. We just missed a school of fish in the uh, Atalanta camera. Darn it. Yeah, I think I got some stills of it. Nice. Yep. It's a decent sized school. Yeah. Okay, to recover? Yeah, bridges go for recovery. All right, we're at about 57 meters, so almost to the top and almost ready for the switch over to uh, the crew on deck. Um, well, we're all on, on the ship, but uh, the ROV pilots will sort of hand over the controls of the winch, I believe, um, shortly. So we're almost to the top, and uh, you'll be able to watch the recovery if you are interested in that part of the dive. Atalanta's at about 25 meters. Glad you said something, Ashton, because there's a question you can answer. <laughs> uh, someone is asking, does the Atlanta pilot control the winch during the dive? Up until 50 meters, but now it's being controlled by someone on deck. Do I need to change the heading at all, Trevor? Okay. 
Okay. I currently have thrusters disabled. Okay, five meters. Bridge, reduce thrust to 25%, please. I copy that, 25% on the jet mode. Little bob action at the mm. surface. Atlanta coming up. Mm -hmm. Atlanta coming onto deck right now. You can see the crew stabilizing the ROV. Some tag lines or safety lines on there to help stabilize while they position her into place put straps on her so that she's secured to deck. Bridge, increase thrust to 90% and hold position, please. Uh, now bridge, co copy that. shortly to follow. 